My name is Katie Backen. I'm the Community Engagement Manager with the Friends of Fish Creek Provincial Park Society. So the Friends of Fish Creek for about 27 years have been engaging the public in all kinds of different opportunities in the park, everything from recreational, educational and stewardship work. Right now we're expanding our mandate in the park to do a lot more public education and public engagement and a lot more stewardship in the park. So what's happening here in the west end of Fish Creek Provincial Park, sandwiched in between Bebo Grove and Marshall Springs, is an area where the beavers have moved in to a beautiful low-lying area. This area is fed by City of Calgary stormwater ponds. It's also fed by the natural springs, um, which Marshall Springs was named for. Um, as you can see behind me here, the beavers have created such a beautiful pond uh, network, and in doing so, they've allowed the water to slow and allow the sediment to settle out. They're recharging the groundwater, they're purifying the water before it makes it back into the creek. They're also creating habitat for all kinds of different mammals, birds, insects, fish and amphibians. So the, the work that they're doing here to create habitat is so important. And so we see a value in that and the Friends of Fish Creek see a need to balance the human and beaver needs in this area of the park. We recognize that beaver activity has caused a lot of negative um, attention, <laughs> a lot of negative impacts for park users, uh, primarily flooding of pathways, but also the felling of trees. So in the past, when a beaver colony moved in, um, they would fell trees, they would flood pathways and things, and then the beavers would be removed. And then years later, another colony would move in and they would fell a lot of trees and cause a bunch of flooding and they would be removed this particular colony we're going to let them actually get established and what we hope is that the actual tree felling should decrease over time because once their dams and lodges are built there's less need to keep um, taking more trees down at that point once they're established their need to take trees will be solely for food really and minor repairs here and there of their dam and structures the fish creek beaver coexistence project has started this year in 2020 with the support of Alberta Environment and Parks and the Watershed Resiliency and Restoration Program, but also thanks to our Friends of Fish Creek volunteers and organizations like Cows and Fish and the Mastakis Institute. We've also brought in beaver experts from Lethbridge, Ubechula Environmental, and from British Columbia Humane Solutions, and they're here helping us today building pond levelers in the park so that we can lower the water levels in these ponds just enough to minimize pathway flooding, but still allowing the beavers the depth of water they need to survive winter. So when we talk about beaver coexistence or any wildlife coexistence, what we're referring to there is our ability as humans to obviously have certain requirements of the land base. Um, in this case, we need somewhere to discharge stormwater. And uh, we also obviously use this site for all sorts of recreation and natural preservation. And as do the beavers, they, they have a requirement as well for water, in their case to retain it more than discharge it. They need that water somewhere to live. They need access to herbivorous vegetation and woody vegetation. So there's the shared need to also access these trees and use these riparian ecosystems uh, as somewhere to live. And so coexistence basically is the acknowledgement that both humans and beavers in this case are going to share this space and we're going to each probably get a little bit less than we would hope for. Some humans would want full access and, and no uh, cooperation on the management of these sites, but obviously the beavers have been land managers since time immemorial, um, at least in this case, the last 10-ish plus thousand years since that last glacier retreated. And so we recognize that beavers have an ability to manage the land, we have an ability to manage the land, and under coexistence, we both work together uh, to accommodate each other's needs. If we're both land managers, humans and beavers, with an interest in how the land is functioning and we're at opposing interests, humans want very little water here and an abundance of trees. Beavers want as much water here as they can possibly get and they're going to use a few trees in achieving that end through the dam building process. If we're constantly in opposition rather than coexistence, we're going to be ever fighting beavers. And unfortunately, that's been the way that beaver management has been conducted in uh, much of the world where beavers are building dams and are presenting a, a competing infrastructure to the human infrastructure. And so in that situation, in the past, we've often relied on lethal management, whereby we have the legal ability to remove the beavers. Um, 
and we could do that non-lethally and try and relocate them, but that's often difficult because a, a problem beaver in one place will often be perceived as a problem beaver in another place, and so people are unwilling to allow that relocation. Uh, so instead, what's often happened is a lethal uh, removal of the beaver, whether that's by trapping or shooting or some other means. And of course, beavers are colony dwelling animals with a territory. So when you remove one member of the territory or, or the entire family from that territory, what you create is a vacuum. And in that vacuum, multiple other beavers will try and move in to claim that space. So whereas you might have had one established family controlling large territory, if you trap out that family, well now you have multiple individual beavers or smaller beaver pairs moving in and fighting over that space. And in doing so and attempting to establish their own territories, they often do more of the destructive, from our perspective, uh, behavior such as tree cutting and dam building and flooding. And so if we work with beavers, to recognize they're going to need access to water and they're going to need access to some vegetation, then we can build these coexistence structures as we'll talk about a little more here. And we're not fighting with beavers, we're working with beavers and, and we're achieving our objective of keeping the water at a manageable level. The beavers are achieving theirs of keeping the water at a livable level where they can overwinter. And we're not seeing the sorts of what we traditionally perceive to be damage occurring at quite the same rate. So the Beaver Coexistence Project is not a silver bullet. When you're trying to work with beavers instead of against them, it's not like fix it and it's done forever. We need volunteer capacity to be able to um, monitor and maintain these sites into the future. So we have a handful of really dedicated, committed volunteers, but essentially these volunteers will be monitoring these sites throughout the year. And when there's a need to do maintenance, i.e. if the beavers have started outsmarting us and they've started to plug the culvert despite the culvert exclusion fencing and started to clog a pond leveler that's meant to flow, then the volunteers will get in there and we will do the, the maintenance necessary to keep the project successful. Sometimes be people have, um, installed these beaver coexistence devices, but they haven't thought about the long-term maintenance. And so there have been cases in Alberta where it's happened and then it wasn't monitored and maintained. And then it was like, oh, it was a failure. Let's not do that again. But it's because there's a, the ongoing monitoring and maintenance is critical to the success of these projects. I'm standing next to the inlet of a coexistence structure called a pond leveler. So behind the beaver dam, which we can see in behind me here, we have a pond form. So I'm upstream of the dam, water would be flowing from upstream to downstream, but the beaver has blocked it. And in this situation, that's fine. As I've talked about previously, we've had, you know, a real proliferation and development of all this beneficial riparian and wetland habitat as a result of that damming. But we're in an area that overlaps with infrastructure. And so as a result of that dam, we've also flooded out some pathways and created dangerous trail conditions. So the, the Friends of Fish Creek Park Society has worked with Humane Solutions and Adrian Nelson, as well as myself, uh, Kirby England with Ubetula Environmental and, and the volunteers of the Friends of Fish Creek uh, Park Society. And we've put together a number of coexistence um, techniques here and installation. So here, as I said, is the, the inlet cage of this pond leveler system. So water's flowing into a 12 inch double wall corrugated pipe and it's being uh, protected, that inlet, by this cage structure, which will keep beavers from blocking the inlet end. Then it flows for 40 feet and out through the dam. And so the beavers perceive that rushing noise of water at the dam they fix in around it, but they don't put it together that this is in fact the inlet that's allowing water to be conducted through. So by adjusting the height at which the, the pond level or pipe sits in the dam, we can set the level of this pond. And we want to get it at such a spot that beavers can still move through here under the ice safely, and they can access food resources and shelter resources but we want to lower it enough that we're not having that ongoing damage to the infrastructure that's in place, the human infrastructure that is, that's in place within the park. And so, you know, with this system, you have water going in, water going out, we set the level and uh, it took maybe three hours and materials that are readily sourced. As I'm right here, we can pan the camera, a mink, which is another semi-aquatic mammal, 
uh, in the weasel family just made its way from there into the water. And uh, you know, this is just yet another beneficiary of a beaver dam. The beaver dam has created this pond, which has created more area for the mink to move around safely. They're also excellent swimmers with a water resistant fur. Uh, they, they groom with the oil they also secrete. And so for that reason, they do very well in beaver ponds. And, and mink have even been known to go into a beaver lodge and uh, take shelter within there. And in some cases where muskrat have made their way into a beaver lodge, the mink will go up and hunt it. Okay, so here we are at our now completed fence and pipe system. The fence and pipe system is a combination of a technology you're already familiar with, which is the pond leveler pipe that's going to conduct water from an upstream to a downstream portion that's otherwise possibly beaver dammed. But what it integrates is what's called an exclusion fence. So these exclusion fences can exist on their own as a means to keep beavers from fully damming a culvert. Of sufficient size, the exclusion fence uh, really spreads out the area over which the beaver's trying to dam. And it, of course, beaver dams are never totally waterproof. And if you put one over a large enough area, it still lets through enough water to keep an area from being flooded. Uh, in this situation, this culvert exclusion fence would not have been able to have been built big enough for that to happen, that water still flows through readily. So it's a combination exclusion fence and pipe in what we call a fence and pipe system. So the water is being conducted in from the upstream end through this series of pipes. And what we see is even if the beavers totally dam the fence, there's still an intake of water and an outflow of water on the downstream end of the culvert here. So we still maintain connectivity of this tributary to that larger stream. The Fish Creek Beaver Coexistence Project has two goals. The first is to actually balance the needs of beavers and humans on the park land base in this area. So lowering the water level so that there's less pathway flooding while also allowing the beavers the water they need to survive winter. That's goal number one. The second goal of the Beaver Coexistence Project is to um, change people's minds about beavers. Because there haven't been a lot of beavers on the land base in the 1900s because of the fur trade, cities, roads, all sorts of things were built in beaver habitat. Now the beavers are coming back and people think, the beavers were never here, this is our space. Well, actually it is the beaver space and they were here for millennia before the humans were. And so it makes sense that there's, there is a perception of beavers as nuisance, beavers as pest, a very negative mindset about beavers. Um, and that's what this project is trying to change. That's the second goal is to transform the dominant social narrative of beavers as pest and start thinking about them more as beavers as habitat creators, beavers as, as water producers. So if people wanna get involved as a volunteer, the Friends of Fish Creek have all kinds of different volunteer opportunities, everything from sitting at a table welcoming guests to a wellness program, all the way to you know using Pulaski's and shovels in the field. So if you visit the website, friendsoffishcreek.org, and you click on the volunteer tab, you can learn about all the different volunteer opportunities we have, and each one will have a little button. If there's a program that we're uh, recruiting for actively, there'll be a little button saying apply with the Friends you create a profile on our online system called My Impact page, and then away you go. You check off which programs interest you, and you will start getting emails to your inbox saying, hey, there's a training coming up for this, or there's a weed pull on this date at this location. So you can join in in a number of different ways. All around Fish Creek Park, everyone is welcome. It's the soul of our community. Breezes whispering in the trees So many courageous stories Tales of amazing history Everyone is welcome All around Fish Creek Park I love watching the beavers Amazing builders They're so clever their dams create animal habitat for bugs and birds and little brown bats holding back water for the growing trees. Here comes the course, last time. All around Fish Creek Park, everyone is welcome. It's the soul of our community, breezes whispering in the trees. 
so many courageous stories, tales of amazing history. Everyone is welcome all around Fish Creek Park. Everyone is welcome all around Fish Creek Park.